home almost 15 years ago and we had 150 preschool centers, Balwadis in Bombay. And we thought that was a very large scale program at the time. This was in 1996. By 1998, we had 3,000 preschool centers, community based preschool centers in Bombay alone. And I think right from the beginning, we've been uh, struggling and uh, challenging ourselves to figure out how do we understand what our own impact is. There's always lots of needs. There are always a shortage of resources. I'm sure even um, um, loans that will be given are in limited supply. And therefore, for any organization or any program, I think there has to be internal curiosity about what are we doing the best. There's, there are a lot of things to be done, but what are we doing the best? How do we measure ourselves? And uh, I think, I don't know when you proceed what your schools feel about this, but internal curiosity really helps the measurement process. <laughs> And also, I think acceptability and action as you go along. Uh, as our programs expanded, first in urban areas, for a number of years at the beginning, we were primarily urban. And now, of course, we are very rural as well. Uh, we found that we are dealing really with two kinds of children. And I think that's the kinds of children that you're kind of dealing with in a different sector as well. The two kinds of children are children who have been left out, who have not come into school for whatever reason, who need to be brought in who are kind of visible and everybody's looking at them, out of school children and how, what do you do, how do you bring them in. And the other kind who's a little more invisible are children who are getting left behind. So you're in school, but you are, uh, and you're moving from class to class because our uh, uh, government rules are that you don't hold anybody back, but you are just physically moving up. Are you really moving up in terms of what you need to do? And in, when we were working, uh, we worked both in, inside schools and in communities uh, right from the beginning, and we continue to want to supplement what the government does, so we really set up our own schools as permanent places for children to go. Um, as we were working on this, we found that the key to helping a child move forward was whether he actually is learning well or not. We find that if a child learns well, teachers like the child. If you're mainstreaming a large number of children into school and the child is doing well, those children are much more welcome. Parents like children who are doing well as well. So how do you get children to be visibly performing well, so that A, they can then fuel themselves through, and B, parents and teachers can support them. If a child is in class five and cannot do very much in school, the tendency for everyone to run him down is very high. So you need visibility for the child as well as for everybody else. The next thing we noticed is acceleration is needed. So visibility of your learning is needed to prove to yourself and to prove to others around you that you're, you're good, you can do it. And secondly, you need to accelerate. When you're uh, 10 years old, and for whatever reason you've been left out or left behind, it's not sufficient that you learn to read a few lines. You have to be brought up to speed to deal with what is in our fifth standard curriculum. I think around 2000, we ourselves in Pratham, we were in several cities now and programs were quite large. We were quite frustrated by our own ability to make the kind of progress that we could see that our children needed. So just like I said, you're 10 years old, you need to be at fifth grade level. You don't need to be at first grade level. So what can we do to kind of move our kids along? If you just put on the slide uh, four, I think it's right. Um, we started experimenting with the basic thing is that if you can't read, it's very difficult for you to do anything else. So just reading is not the only thing, but it's the first point after which you can move on. And this is the simple tool we created originally to figure out our own instructional strategies. So can you read letters? Can you read words? Can you read a simple four lines connected text, which is at first grade level, and then there is the longer second grade level text. And the reason we came up with this was we wanted to, on scale, figure out what you need to do to move kids from one level to the next. So originally, this was really a tool for our own thinking about instructional strategy. And so if you can't read letters, what are the activities you need to do to move from here to there? What do you need to do to move from the next level, from the words to the text, and so on? But as we were using it, a, a whole accelerated learning technique emerged. And in our first pilot, I think we had 200,000 children that every full-time Pratham person worked for a month or two with children to see. And it's not just what activities do you do, but what are the levels at which you go, and how long does it take you to get there on scale? The simplicity was really important because we had a large number of people who were participating, and you needed the benchmark very simply understood. Uh, if you show the next slide, this is what we did in our own classes, and this is what eventually a lot of government school teachers also use. You use the tool, there's a baseline, there's a build, and there's a final. You put your kids' names in the, uh, in the cell, 
and then your kids' names move up, and you take a look at this, it gives you an aggregate view of your class as well as the progress of your individual children. Now, a lot of uh, sort of um, side effects that we had not anticipated. One was that as we began to use the tool that you saw before, in communities and in schools, a lot of the adults began to really pay attention. And at that stage, I remember we did a few exercises just to figure out how well do we know our own children. We are a very crowded country, we have big families, we have big classrooms. So how well do you know individual children? Uh, in a study that MIT did with us, we actually asked uh, parents in a part of the uh, survey uh, to, you know, if you go back to the tool, just go back to the previous slide. So where do you think your kid is at? Your kid goes to school, he's in whatever grade, where is he at? Systematically parents overestimated what their children could do. We did the same thing with teachers. In a different study that we've done with somebody at the University of Oxford, we asked teachers in your class, in, in a class, in a class that has been running for six months, where do you think the kid is at? You know, in this very simple way. You know, maybe the kids are way beyond this, but what do you think? Systematically, teachers overestimated where the kids are at. So, big thing was, A, learning is not an important part of a lot of our debate at the ground level all the way up to the policy level, all the way up to the millennium development goal level. There is no learning goal for the, for the world at large. These are all things that in India we want our children to do. Uh, and uh, there's nothing, Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan has a very broad, vague definition of learning. But more importantly, I think parents, when you engage with them on learning, say, I'm sending my children to tuition classes. I'm spending more money on children. So we have a very, still a very grounded, input-based approach to improving things. And what a lot of the work that we were doing indicated that unless you focus on outcomes, you could spend a lot of money at the state level, country level, family level, and not get to the outcomes. So simple articulation of outcomes that most people can understand was key to kind of moving this debate forward. Uh, and this, you know, in a way is the, is the simple kind of articulation of the very, very basic goals. You need to go well beyond this. But where are we on this? Uh, I've been flashed various one minute, two minute things, so I'm going to speed up. Uh, we also found out that, at least for rural, rural India, and maybe the case for urban slum parents as well, 50% of the mothers of the children who are in school are illiterate. So the engagement with learning is really difficult because you yourself are illiterate and you don't know what to do. The use of this kind of a simple tool at the village level uh, on very large scale brought about a lot of discussions. I mean, we've had you know, scores of parents say, oh, is this what learning is all about? Because textbooks are too difficult for me to deal with. When I go to school, the teachers are, you know, they're upper caste, higher caste, they're, they're a different category from us. And we really didn't understand, we know education, you know, you should get a good education, but what that actually means. So I think in whatever you do, we do, it's very important that people understand what this whole outcome business is all about and a simple articulation of it, along with a simple way of moving from one level to the other. If I take your temperature and tell you you're really ill and then walk away, you know, the chances are that you will probably just die. <laughs> so but as well as, I don't need you person, but, uh, but if I am able to take your temperature and then offer you a solution right away that you and people around you can do, the chances are that you'll take the assessment and actually act on it is probably a little bit higher. So when we started doing ASAR, there were no available estimates for basic learning levels in India. What the government does is a pen and paper test. But as you'll see, 50% of children can't read this. So doing a pen and paper test before you can actually figure out how many children can read may give you results which are not quite the results you need to act on. So this is done basically for all, all districts. We have about 580 rural districts in the country every year on a random sample of children. And the simplicity has really helped both for doing it because then anybody, almost anybody can do it. But the explaining of it is also easy. And therefore what Asar has attempted to do is to generate these estimates for the whole country and then spend almost more money and more time to explain the results all the way from the panchayat, to the block, to the district, to the, you know, Mr. Aluwalia, and now it turns out to a lot of other countries as well. Uh, this exercise is now being done in Pakistan. It is being done in Kenya, in Tanzania, in um, Uganda, and a lot of interest, mainly because of the simplicity, I think, of the way it can be done, and therefore it's simple and it's also fairly, you know, low cost. It takes, depending on your kid, less than five minutes to actually go through with it. Um, I'll stop here and hope that you'll ask us lots of questions.